This is the new Lexus LS. The flagship limousine is now in its fifth generation. What's the Japanese luxury like? At the end of the 1980s, when the first generation LS debuted, not many thought the Japanese limo can compete against the well-established German players like BMW and Mercedes-Benz. It's no accident I didn't mention Audi, because although LS and A8 started on the drawing boards at about the same time, Lexus was on the market four years ahead of Audi. Compared to E32 or even E38 BMWs, Lexus LS must have looked very modern. I think it looks somewhat like a rounded off W125 Mercedes. Regardless of the looks, Lexus proved refined and reliable. In the fourth generation, Lexus boasted over 2,500 improvements, but as perception of luxury among clients changes, the fifth generation is all about lifestyle. New LS is supposed to be an amazing experience. It's all about quality, bold design and tech. Then the brochure turns to modern design and traditional Japanese aesthetics. Designers talk in length about a spindle-shaped grille. Apparently, making a 3D CAD model took three months for the ordinary version, which only has 5,000 individual surfaces, and five months for this F-Sport version, which has 7,000 individual surfaces. There should be a separate price list for detailing of an LS. Just 6,995 more. This will take a while. Lexus LS rides on the new GAL platform, which allowed engineers to lower the body by 1.5 centimeters, but bonnet and boot lid are lower 3 and 4 centimeters, respectively. In the front, besides the grille, another eye-catching feature are the LED headlights, which look as if the car was squinting its eyes. Lamps in the back are also LED, but if you think Lexus went to town with the exterior design, wait till you look inside. You open the door and you're greeted by this orgy of shapes and textures, and it's not the F Sport trim because it's actually quite conservatively finished, maybe except for the red leather, but never mind that. To me, it's like those paintings made by splashing buckets of paint on canvas. There's a lot going on here, but in most cases, most cases, the interior is actually surprisingly functional. Buttons on the steering wheel are logically placed, and there aren't too many of them. There is a virtual instrument cluster, but with a physical moving ref counter frame. In the left side menu, there are settings for just about anything that may irritate you. You can probably change the setting or turn it off here. Then we have the center console with an interesting storage flap, which I can open and which the passenger can open as well. Then there are a couple of cup holders, sorry for the mess, but it's raining. And we have a controller for the infotainment system. Going up, there is a panel with some physical buttons and knobs for AC and multimedia. This is a good idea because going through multi-stage on-screen menus would be a nuisance. Which takes us to the infotainment system, which is absolutely the worst in the automotive history. A herd of drunk monkeys could design a more intuitive solution. My neighbor's toddlers are more coherent than this she's of pit. On the plus side, every day you discover something new. So, for example, on a hot day, you may find out these seats are actually ventilated. And then you're looking for ways to switch that thing off. And then you find electric headrest adjustment. On the passenger side, why? What about my headrest? and the glove box with a button which seems to only say cancel. I had to flip through the entire manual because it was not under glove box. The button turns off power tailgate, so basically it's valet mode. You can then lock the glove box with a key and hand the fob to the valet who cannot access the boot. And what about access through the back seats, you ask? Well, you cannot fold them. In Audi A6 you could lock the backrests with a key and in Lexus LS you don't have this problem. 
Obviously, there's plenty of space in the back, and if the CEO wants more legroom, they can move the front passenger seat forward. The driver can do it too. Answering your question, no, you can't do it if there is a person sitting in the front. Thank you, bye. Yes. Now it works. Oh, yes. AC, seats and rear blind can be operated with buttons on the center armrest. Higher trim versions get a touchscreen. And in the top trim, passenger seat folds even more to make legroom for when the back seat reclines. The 480-liter boot is upholstered from bottom to top, something most competitors skimp on and leave exposed top part because nobody looks there except for car journalists. Boot in the hybrid version is 30 liters smaller. Under the floor, there is a battery and a repair kit. Driving around in a 5.2 meter long limo takes some getting used to. First of all, the LS is heavy at 2.4 tons, so the 417 horsepower, 600 Nm meter by turbo V6 has its work cut out for it. Hybrid version is even heavier, but I suspect the torque from the electric motor makes the car more flexible, it accelerates better, and I'm sure it's also more economic. LS500, the petrol model, should use around 10 liters per 100 kilometers. In my unscientific, yet quite reliable test cycle, I'm getting around 13. That's 18 mpg instead of claimed 23. Despite some F-Sport badges here on the steering wheel and here on the headrest, Lexus LS is anything but sporty. It's a comfortable limousine for long cruises, but fast, like a samurai sword cutting through the air to hit its victim. And then you lift off the accelerator, and then you coast for a couple of minutes, and then you realize you're still doing 140 km per hour. The 10-speed automatic gearbox keeps revs at ridiculously low levels, regardless of the speed you're doing. So this, plus the fact that the car is very well sound insulated, very stable, means you don't feel the speed. Just remember, stopping at almost 2.5 ton car is a big strain on the brakes and on the tires. Lexus LS uh, stops with dignity, so no tailgating. Most of the time I drove in eco mode or comfort or normal, but if you put the car into sport mode or sport plus, it becomes faster, more responsive, and there's a fake engine noise pumped into the cabin, because otherwise LS is actually a very quiet car. Fake. See what I mean about braking? It just takes ages. Lexus LS is equipped in all the currently available driver aids. There is adaptive cruise control, active lane assist, collision warning with emergency braking. LS will also brake while parking if it senses a pedestrian around the car. However, in my opinion, this feature is a bit too sensitive. And that's pretty much it as far as driving the LS is concerned. It's a really comfortable car for a CEO to drive or to be driven in. It covers ground fast and in great comfort. It looks exciting, but handling is much more conservative. Lexus LS prices start at €93,000 for the hybrid and petrol starts at a whopping €106,000. This F-Sport petrol model costs about €117,000, so you really have to be mad to consider a petrol variant when a hybrid variant is at least €10,000 cheaper depending on the trim. If you're looking for a comfortable limousine, but cutting-edge infotainment isn't at the top of your list, then Lexus LS is worth considering. 
And what's your opinion on Lexus LS and Lexus in general? Do you like high-tech limos or rather less complicated ones? Let me know in the comment section below. Subscribe if you haven't, share this video with your friends and join me for new episodes every Friday. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.